Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Jocelyn and I am an online teacher and digital nomad. One of the companies that I currently teach with is OutSchool and I have been an OutSchool teacher since the summer of 2020. And throughout the past years, I have learned a thing or two about creating quality classes that keep students coming back to learn more with you. In this video, I want to discuss three ways that you can add value to your OutSchool classes and leave families and your students with a positive impression of your lessons and your teaching abilities. As always, if you find what you learn here helpful, please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to be notified of future videos. And be sure to stay until the end of this video because I would like to share with you my number one tip for creating quality lessons and share with you a free resource that is going to save you time and also leave a really good impression with your students. So let's dive into my three easy ways to add value to your lessons. Tip number one is definitely a really important one, especially in the online space where you aren't able to communicate with families and parents or adults of your students in person. And that is clear communication. Families and students want to know exactly what they can expect from you and your lessons. In most cases, they're spending their own money and investing in their child's education. So clear communication is definitely a must. Clear communication means being clear and concise in your outschool listings about what students can expect from your lessons so they know what they are signing up for. It also means sending out clear communications with your students and families about what materials or supplies or basically anything that they need in order to be successful in your class. Whenever I send messages to students or families regarding class materials, I do my best to post at least 24 hours before the class starts so that this gives the families and students time to either collect the supplies, possibly print something if they need to print something, and get everything situated so that they're ready and prepared to come to your lesson. I also do my best to maintain contact with families regarding their students' progress in the class or any concerns I may have. This is really important important, especially in the online learning space, because unlike a typical in-person brick and mortar school, you don't have the opportunity to do in-person parent-teacher conferences. And in particular, on the out-school platform, you don't even really have the opportunity to FaceTime with parents unless they stay after class. So making sure that you're periodically sending out different little progress reports or just little messages saying what their student is doing well is going to go a long way because it shows that you genuinely care about the students in your classroom. I also try to take a moment to message families if their child misses a lesson, you know, just asking, oh, you know, I noticed so-and-so wasn't in class today. We've really missed them. These are things that you can do to prepare for the next lesson. Or here are some of the activities that we did that your child missed in this class. I know that these things are not required by out school for us to do as teachers, but it definitely goes a long way with parents and families leaving a very strong impression about you and your teaching abilities, as well as your communication skills. And while I know that keeping track of messaging families can sometimes feel a little overwhelming or can be a bit difficult at times if you have a heavy teaching schedule, I do have a resource for you that can help. This resource is free and contains multiple message templates that you can use as an out school teacher. I will leave the link down in the description box below. You're welcome to click on it and I will give you access to this free Google Doc template that I created. I will also post the link to another video that I made about time-saving tricks for out-school teachers that talks a little bit more about these templates and how you can use them. And now let's move on to tip number two. The second way that you can add value to your out-school classes is to incorporate online tools that are going to increase in student engagement and participation. You can create high quality looking lessons using Canva, which allows you to access professional and eye-catching graphics and photos. You can create interactive games and word generators using wordwall.net 
or you can try out Nearpod that will allow your students to draw on the screen and play games to demonstrate their understanding and so much more. Some of these online tools offer a free version while others you might have to invest a little bit of money in. But when I tell you that when you begin to incorporate different online tools that increase that participation and engagement from your students, it is going to really help with your re-enrollment rates because students are not only going to be learning in your classes, but they're also going to be having a lot of fun and enjoy the experience. So it's definitely worth the investment. And that leads us to tip number three, which is creating additional resources and activities for your students to complete after your lessons are over. So while you may create different games and activities for your students to do with you while they're in class, it's also beneficial to give them the option to do some activities to practice what you're learning during the lesson outside of class as well, especially when it comes to teaching languages where repeat exposure and practice is so important in retaining that new information. Something that I like to do with my Spanish language lessons is to send a message to families after class with a summary of what we began learning in the class, any vocabulary or particular grammar concepts, and then I'll list a few activities, games, or worksheets that they can do to continue practicing these concepts or the new vocabulary. Sometimes I'll include grammar guides or worksheets, while other times it might be a simple activity like, hey, I'm going to challenge you and your student to complete a scavenger hunt where they have to find the five things that we were talking about in class today. And when they find that object, then I want them to say the word in Spanish. So these are just easy and creative ways that you're adding to the value of your classes because now the student not only has the opportunity to practice the material in class with you, but now they can also practice it outside of class as well. I would also like to say that I do mention to families that these are optional activities. They are not required to do them with their student or they don't have to make their child sit there and do it if they don't want to, but I've given them the opportunity to continue to practice if they would like to. And whether or not this student completes these activities outside of class, I definitely know from reviews that I've received and messages I've received from families and students, they do appreciate that extra effort that I've taken to provide supplementary materials, guides, or activities that, that their student can complete in order to continue practicing even once class is over. And like I said, some of these might just be games like a scavenger hunt that they can complete with very minimal supplies. But I do also create different games or worksheets using Canva where I can send that to the family and they can print it out to complete it. If you're curious about learning a little bit more how you can also create games and activities, worksheets, for your students using Canva, feel free to take a look at my Canva workshop or my other YouTube videos that give tutorials on how to use this tool and create fun activities for your lessons or those resources that you can provide to families after class is over. In summary, three easy ways that you can add value to your classes is number one, make sure that you are clearly communicating to your parents' expectations, materials, and those occasional little notes about how their student is doing in the class. Number two, incorporate online tools as you feel ready. Don't feel like you have to incorporate a ton of tools if you are just starting out, but as you become more comfortable with online teaching and your students, begin to test the waters and try out different tools like WordWall, Nearpod, or Canva. And tip number three, don't be afraid to send families additional activities that they can do outside of class with their students or their student can complete independently, just further adding to the value that you are providing to their students' educational experience. Feel free to let me know down in the comments section below which of these tips you are going to incorporate into your next OutSchool course. And if you have any tips of yourself, feel free to leave them down below as well. That's all the information that I have to share for today's video. I hope you found it helpful. As always, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Have a wonderful day and happy teaching.